So I've been a Linode customer for 10 years and now they're sponsoring this channel. Linode is a great product when it comes to web hosting. I've used them in my $20 a month account to literally serve traffic to hundreds of thousands of people in a month and it only cost me $20 a month. When you compare that to Azure or AWS, like it doesn't even, it's not even in the same ballpark. Linode has all kinds of options to choose from, including their new dedicated CPU plans. And if you're trying to do stuff like machine learning, like video encoding, databases, game servers, data mining, stuff like that, Linode already has nine data centers around the world and they're opening two more this year. If you guys sign up, you get a $20 a month credit just to sign up with the link in the description tab below. So make sure you use that because you can save 20 bucks. Hey guys, what's up? Um, so in this video, I'm talking about the AI winner and what that is. And um, AI stands for artificial intelligence. I'm sure everybody knows that. Uh, but the AI winner is what is actually referred to as the period of time where there's a investor cool off from the amount of money and everything that's being poured into machine learning and artificial intelligence. Believe it or not, artificial intelligence goes all the way back to at least the 1950s where a ton of research was being poured into it. Uh, to the point where we've had AI winners, where we've had these periods of cool off, um, sometimes for a decade or more, um, that have occurred in the 60s and the 80s, um, and then also into the 90s. Um, now, into the mid 90s, we started to get some new technology, some new, um, really a, a new way of looking at our uh, neural networks and the way that we reprocess the information over and over again to do deep learning. There was this new algorithm or this new way of doing it called backpropagation. Um, and the reason why I talk about the AI winner is coming now is because the guy that actually revolutionized all of the deep learning, machine learning stuff that we're doing um, right now and having success at, um, that guy is actually telling us to pump our brakes and that we have to completely start over from square one. So that guy is named Jeffrey Henton, and he's an English Canadian cognitive psychologist and computer scientist. Um, he's the guy who actually came up with this thing called back propagation and is considered really the godfather of deep learning. So deep learning is actually how Google came up with the, um, the AlphaGo, which was able to beat the Go champion. Um, and that was actually a, quite a, an accomplished feat, but however, that was uh, structured learning. It was, um, it was a specific task. It was AI built for a specific task to solve a specific problem. And we've actually been able to see that we can do that with image recognition, um, with, things like you know, a text recognition or voice recognition, things like that. Um, we can find patterns and we can break those things down into smaller minute parts and then feed that through a de a, an algorithm or a neural network where it's literally just processing over and over and over and over again. Sometimes these programs now take weeks or months to get any sort of feedback because it has to run over and over and over again. So what's crazy about machine learning in 2019 is with the billions and billions of dollars that have been put into this uh, industry for now decades, we do see artificial intelligence all around us from video games um, to just generally like predicting images and Snapchat filters, things like that. We do see that kind of stuff. Um, and a lot of that stuff is, um, is really awesome. It took a lot, a lot of time to develop, but they use these things called neural networks and neural networks uh, for image recognition. Basically, you're going to take an image and um, you're going to have to have roughly, you know, tons of other images to classify. So if you're trying to figure out images that are going to recognize certain birds, then you're going to have to have you know 50 to 100,000 images of birds probably even of the same birds like thousands of images of the same type of bird in different different views and colors and things like that and not really colors cuz birds typically have the same colors that's how they're identifiable but you, you know what I'm talking about and then the program is then going to take the actual images and and it's going to break them down into digestible chunks so with these neural networks you need to have data plots and if your data isn't situated and and sorted correctly uh, or labeled correctly, then your, your, um, your neural network is never going to learn. Um, you're just going to have mixed results, terrible results. Uh, but it, it, what's interesting about all this stuff is that this neural network has actually been invented um, back as, I think, in the 1950s or something like that when it was first thought up. Um, so the, the, the knowledge base of the math involved in something like machine learning and artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, isn't even new. There are newer types of ways of going about it, but for the most part, we're still using the best ideas that we could come up with in the 1950s and things like that. Um, we tried to model this after the way that we think the human brain works, but the problem that we have is that with these feed-forward networks, um, these programs now, so like back in the old days, we used to have uh, like punch cards, right? Where programmers had punch cards, and then they'd take it to the compiler, and, and at the end of the week, I think either compiled or it didn't. 
and machine learning, it's kind of the same thing. Like you're going to have to run your program and let it run sometimes for weeks or months um, or even longer, depending on the type of hardware you have and the amount of data you're processing. Um, and the only way to get significant feedback and the way that Google does it and everything else is because they have massive amounts of data. So data is really the key to all of this because nobody's crafty enough to come up with any sort of cognitive machine, no matter what anybody says. The bottom line, though, is winter is coming because of commercials like this. So who sent you? New guy. What new guy? Watson. My analysis of sensor and maintenance data indicates elevator three will malfunction in two days. So the bottom line is that this thing has no ability, though, to predict the future. It doesn't even have the cognitive capabilities of a one year old child. All of the deep learning, machine learning that I've seen, especially where we've had any sort of success, um, is built around the feed forward neural networks, large amounts of data, large intense amounts of processing, data cons uh, power consumption, things like that, in order to be able to process and make sense of the information. But the thing is, is that we know that the human brain doesn't operate that way. And Jeffrey Hinton himself is pretty much convinced that the human brain does not operate this way, where it has to repeat things over and over again a million times in order to be able to say, okay, I shouldn't do that. Like, how many times do you have to run a red light and get pulled over before you stop running red lights? How many times do you have to get DUIs before you stop drinking and driving behind the wheel? A machine learning algorithm, no matter how smart and how good we've made it, still has to learn those things over and over and over and over and over again in order to make any sort of analysis of it. So you can make an argument that maybe billions of years of human evolution, that that's what we've done. Um, but we don't know that for a fact. And we don't know um, really anything about consciousness, really. So we have all these different um, small things that are that are being dealt with inside of our brains, these subconscious things that allow you know breathing and, and things like that. Um, these things require little to no thought, little to no effort. But the smallest amounts of, of processing with machine learning requires intense calculations and intense data and intense iterations. So AlphaGo from Google's DeepMind project was one of the largest successes that we've seen with deep learning. And this uh, was able to beat the grand champion at the game Go, which has even more possibilities than chess. Um, again, it was a structured learning environment. It's not like, uh, so when we talk about will AI take coders jobs, absolutely not, not for the next 50 to 100 years, probably minimum. The reason why is because, again, we don't have any sort of cognitive systems that even have the capabilities of a one-year-old child. So how the hell are you going to give a one-year-old child, um, even if you did have, to have the capabilities of a one-year-old child, how are you going to give that the capability of just, oh, let, let me just figure out my business process, you know, like just figure out my business process for me. If AI and cognitive machines truly existed like that, and if IBM Watson was truly that spectacular about figuring out the future, then it would be competing with Google head to head on Google searches because it would just know what you're searching. In fact, it would predict the future knowing this dude's going to search for this at this time. Obviously, I know that that's a stretch, but so is that commercial. Like, I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And when people keep talking about stuff like that, it's going to lead to the AI winner because right now billions of dollars are being invested in um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And it should be because people like Larry Page from Google has said that the greatest invest or greatest invention in his time is actually artificial intelligence. So he's actually quite impressed with it. And Google has done impressive things. But the reason why is because of the amount of data, money, and processing power that Google has. They have the best engineers in the world. They have the most data. And they have the biggest um, processing capabilities. They're one of the few companies to have a quantum computer. Google has the ability to do things that other people can't do. And even with the best of what we're able to do, we can only see real, real large successes in very, very structured environments. So can business benefit from AI and structured environment, get structured feedback for specific chunks of their business? Of course. But the, the actual complexities there are going to be in collecting and analyzing and data plotting and then trying to make sense of that. The algorithms, the math and everything like that is, is, is very, very daunting for machine learning, um, regardless of what anybody says on that as well. Like machine learning math is very, very crazy complex. Um, it, it's beyond calculus. It's beyond linear algebra. It's, it's much, much more difficult than any of all that stuff. But a lot of people, when they're first getting into this, they actually think it's much easier because they get, you know, these, uh, this already sorted classified data plots, you know, this already, 
uh, you know, the hard part of classifying the data is, is structuring it all out. Um, a lot of people will download, like, uh, there's a famous library that has a bunch of handwritten, um, letters, like characters, and it's like 50,000 of them or something like that. So when you download 50,000 of them and run that through an algorithm, well, that's great. But the pro the getting 50,000 images together and then classifying them all, that takes a lot of time and effort and things like that. So when somebody just downloads a library like that and then runs it through and they can see, oh yeah, like I followed this tutorial step by step and I'm getting the same result. Machine learning is easy. Not, not, not at all the case. Like, I mean, every case is different. The math is going to be crazy complex to be able to adjust. Um, the back propagation through the neural networks where, where feed forward means it always goes in this, uh, the same linear direction. Uh, but then to make corrections, the um, it will repeat itself using this thing called back propagation, and it will change the actual input parameters on some of these neural endpoints to get different output. And that's how it does it over and over and over again. And eventually it starts to make sense of the data that it's looking at. But what we've understood uh, about the human brain and, and what we know of it so far is that it simply does not operate that way. At least we don't think so. And if And if it does... After nearly a half century of trying to build neural networks uh, electronically via computer code, we still are not nearly as close to being as efficient as an actual, you know, molecular or uh, biological organism that, that we are, um, that our brains consist of. Um, you know, whatever it is, uh, it, it does it much, much better than our electrical uh, inputs, you know, ones and zeros that are ultimately... Um, sending data, you know, through the, throughout these neural networks. So